Hey guys, Andrew and Mitchell from Angle here. Uh, we just finished up visiting our old uh, alma mater, Cal State Fullerton. We caught them playing the uh, UC Santa Barbara Gauchos. So the reason we were in attendance tonight uh, was to see AJ Mitchell on UC Santa Barbara. Um, as you'll see in the beginning slide, uh, he is mock drafted in a, uh, from various mock drafts, he's projected anywhere between uh, late first round to mid second round. Um, as we had mentioned in previous versions of this vlog, um, we are deep dynasty league players. We play in 30 team leagues that has full 60 player drafts. So um, guys of this caliber is definitely people that we want to keep an eye on. So um, at the end of the game, um, Cal State Fullerton absolutely dominated this one, which is surprising to see because they really don't have too strong of a team this year, uh, which goes to show, you know, kind of the struggles that Santa Barbara has gone through this year, too. Um, so AJ finished with 12 points, three rebounds, and four assists. With um, one, one steal, that's too. That's yep, Can't he did forget get, that. Yep, he did get one steal. So obviously, you know, looking at a nine-category stat set, uh, that one steal is important. Um, so, um, you know, we, we noticed a lot of things about the game. For starters, um, ever since he and I were in were at Cal State Fullerton, this team is known for exclusively running a 2-3 zone. Think about, you know, the, the Jim Beheim Syracuse 3-2 zone, uh, that, that signature team. You know, no matter what player was on that team, they always ran that zone. Cal State Fullerton pretty much does this same thing with their 2-3 zone. Um, and this was something where, you know, Mitchell had to get pretty creative to navigate through this. A lot of what he was doing was, you know, he was doing the right thing. He was attacking the gaps that are naturally there in a 2-3 zone to suck in the defense and then was kicking out to his shooters. Um, but, you know, there was a couple of mistakes that we saw. And a big part of what we um, wanted to see more of was him initiating more on offense. So there was a lot of good flashes in his game. So Mitch, I wanted to get your opinion. You know, what do you think he might be capable of when he tries to take over more in a game? Yeah, so a lot of how the game was played out, AJ Mitchell was coming, th coming down through like a curl. Uh, that curl action where he was on, kind of had momentum on his side and he was able to navigate and really suck in the defense and kick it out with the skip pass. So he's really good at that. And he was able to create a lot of open looks from the three point line. So that's really encouraging. Something that we didn't see was his uh, pick and roll game. So that's, that's right. something that was really highlighted in no ceilings draft guide that he is a pick and roll maestro when he needs to be. Uh, the thing about that though, he doesn't really have a lot of athletic pop. So that's something that he needs to work on. Um, you, but at the same time, it's something that you either have or you don't have. Mm -hmm. But he really makes the most of it with his creativity, right, Andrew? So uh, he is a great uh, in the paint finisher at the rim. Uh, he does rely on his footwork. So he had a lot of creative drives. Um, he is pretty big. So something that we didn't mention yet is that AJ Mitchell is a 6'4 lead guard. Mm -hmm. I believe he's around like 200, 210 pounds, mm -hmm. broad shoulders, um, but not the most, most athletic guy. So when we're thinking of a potential stat set, um, we're thinking of AJ Mitchell as someone who can provide like a Monte Morris type uh, line. AJ Mitchell is very, uh, he is very efficient shooting the ball he shot five for nine today and he just needs to shoot on more volume and really play more assertive then he can really unlock his potential uh full potential per se but someone who can you know really accumulate stats across the board across those nine categories mm -hmm. um andrew what were your initial thoughts based on the game so when we were uh looking through so you know sticking to the comparison talk for a little bit more um, when we were looking through at different backup point guards in the league, which is what we think, you know, it's most likely going to be the ceiling for AJ here, you know, like 90% of what a backup, what a backup point guard is in this, uh, in the NBA nowadays is usually the fast twitch springy, um, steals and assists types player. Think Chris Dunn, think Dennis Smith Jr., Miles McBride, guys like that. That's generally what majority of backup point guards in the leagues are like. So the slower, 
um, floor generals who like to slow down the pace of the game and play um, to their advantage with their shiftiness and creativity. Um, guys that have high IQ who are not really prone to making mistakes. They're not going to generate those types of steals like the aforementioned, you know, Chris Dunn, Dennis Smiths, you know, the hyper athletes like that. Uh, but they're going to not really hurt you anywhere either um, in regards to nine category. Like how we mentioned Monte Morris, another comparison we thought of um, was Skylar Mays too. Mm -hmm. um, so those are those kind of two different categories that are out there for backup point guards of the, in the league is the fast twitch um, steals and assists guys or the slow it down guys um, who are able to rely on their craftiness IQ. And these types of players are usually ones that can handle a bit more of a scoring load too. You'll see in the highlights from earlier, there's a lot of flair in his game. There was some very impressive finishing at the rim as well as some very impressive passing lanes that he found. Um, but you know, if I was somebody in a position to give AJ Mitchell some advice, I would definitely encourage him to get more of his own on this team because we really do think that he is capable mm -hmm. of getting more of his own offensively. Uh, but he was really just trying to play within the system, which, you know, we get it. You want to be a good team player. But at the end of the day, I would almost encourage him to be a little bit more selfish for himself right. uh, to help improve his draft right. stock. And, and I'm sure he knows he's on Team Sp potential draft radar mm -hmm. um, looking into the 2024 NBA draft. All right, so I'm really excited for his potential development. He needs to improve on defense. He just needs to be a little bit more disciplined. He was kind of hiding on Fullerton's. Uh, we definitely play. noticed that he was yeah. being, he was being hidden on one of the weaker offensive players, players for Fullerton throughout most of the game defensively. So exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if he's able to really unlock his defensive potential, we do see a potential starting uh, upside. So think Andrew Nemhart. he's not the most athletic, but he is defensively sound. He is a, an efficient shot creator and shot maker, mm -hmm. and he can play the pick and roll and generate some assists uh, as a uh, off ball guard. Um, so that's some of his upside, you know, hopefully he can hit it. Uh, but as of now, I, you know, personally, I wouldn't want to spend a first round pick on him in a dynasty rookie draft. I kind of have him as a gamble on the early uh, second round. Andrew, what are your thoughts on a potential uh, rookie draft for 2024 in Dynasty League? Yeah, I mean, the more realistic price is definitely going to be somewhere between, you know, 35 to 40 range, I think, is where people are going to be really interested in, in giving a shot at him. Because this is somebody, when he's playing with better players, um, like at the Combine, those types of showcases, I think he's somebody who has the potential to rise up draft boards a lot. Um, when he's surrounded by guys who are actually going to be much better at knocking down shots. Um, so, um, you know, if he really does make a lot of noise at the combine, then we could be talking the late 20s, you know, somewhere from the 25 to 30 range. But realistically, I think people are going to have, um, you know, in a dynasty draft, they're going to be more interested in him once it gets past the first round is when people might start considering him. So thank you guys for tuning in today. We really appreciate it. You know, if you like today's video, please be sure to hit that like button. Please be sure to subscribe to the channel. Um, hopefully, you know, the college season's wrapping up here, so this might be the last uh, vlog that we'll be doing for a little while, but next season we're going to be planning to visit and uh, scout a lot more uh, recruits and um, incoming prospects for the 2025 draft. So thank you guys for tuning in today. We'll see you next time. This right here is the Cal State Fullerton Recreation Center, where an organized intramural basketball league is essentially what started Angle Fantasy Sports. Mm -hmm.